I quit my job to become a full-time entrepreneur. And so in that, I was expecting for it to be one person, one income. And then what felt like overnight, it became three people, (laughs) one income. And so things began to become very, very tough for me. And so I had to make some very difficult decisions about finances, about what this means for my life. How was I going to proceed? And eventually I ended up in a position where I actually fell into a multiple year depression where I was really struggling with my identity, struggling with who I was. Like, who was I outside of my corporate career, my six-figure corporate career, first of all? Who was I outside of that? Who was I as a mom? Who was I as an entrepreneur? And literally, I felt like I had to maintain this perfect persona of who I was because of my accomplishments, because I had been featured in Black Enterprise, Jeb, you know, uh, Essence, and all these different places. I felt like I had to continue to show up like I had everything together, but literally inside, I was dying inside. And so finally, I ended up taking a three-year break from my business because I felt so unqualified. I felt so unqualified. I felt like, how could I be called to do this work if my own life feels like it's falling apart? Who am I to sit up here and empower these moms where I'm a single mom? Like I ignored the red flags with their dad. I totally ignored it, right? And then I end up in this situation where now I'm pregnant with twins and I have no idea what to do. I have a mortgage to pay and I'm just sitting here struggling and my finances were falling out. I had almost an 800 uh, 800 credit score before I got pregnant. And next thing you know, it was in the tank, but yet I taught personal finances. So who am I to keep showing up to teach? Who am I to keep showing up to empower? Who am I to sit up here and tell my kids that they can be anything they wanna be when I'm falling apart? Because I was focusing on the stereotypes. I was focusing on proving the stereotypes wrong. I was afraid of what my life was going to become because of what I saw about single moms in the media, on TV, through people I knew, right? And things that were highlighted. I was afraid, right? And so I parented from a place of fear. I lived in a place of fear. I lived in a place of proving where I was trying to prove that their dad was wrong with all the word curses that he uttered against me and my unborn kids at that point in time. The word curses, the evil that he spoke both over me and of the kids, it carried me. The weight of the world was on my shoulders and I literally got to the point where I was crashing. And it got, I remember when I was um, getting the kids ready for bed and one day I literally collapsed, just collapsed Uh, after actually they were uh, in bed and I was preparing for the next day and I collapsed because literally in that moment, the weight of the world was on my shoulder. See, that's you, right? Right. Yes. See, it's, a, it's, it's crazy the things that we do to ourselves because I literally got to this point where I'm like, I don't want my kids to recognize that they're kids of a single mom. And so I would buy gifts times two. I would, um, uh, I would buy gifts times two. I would look at the birthday parties that married moms through their kids and I would do exactly that. But I was going broke, literally going broke. My, I, 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 like, I got to the point where I stopped repeating the words that their dad spoke over my kids because I realized that our words have power. And even though I've gone through the prayers to break all those word curses, I'm like, the Lord convicted me. Like I have to stop repeating what he said because that is not their reality. But just know that the that he spoke some serious word curses over my kids and over me. And that literally became how I parented. I parented in opposite of what he said they were going to be. Oh, Angela, okay, you're a single mom of a four-year-old. Nice, nice. And I'm a single mom of um, twin six-year-olds. So, but yes, but God. And so I got to the point where I was literally buying baby clothes at Saks. 
because I'm like, my kids aren't going to know that they are a single mom of a single mom. So they're going to wear Saks Fifth Avenue baby clothes. And yet I was going broke. And then because I was going broke, I'm sitting up here like, how am I going to sit up here and teach single moms about finances? Because the Lord told me to shift my business from talking about finances for single women to finances for single moms. I'm like, how am I going to sit up here and do this when my own finances are falling apart? I felt like a hypocrite. I was thinking about my past and everything that I was going through right now. And I'm like, yo, Lord, how can you use me? This isn't making sense to me. I am in so much pain. Do you hear me? Do you care about me? Do you see the tears that I'm crying? Do you see me sitting here in the corner crying, unable to get up? Do you even care? Lord, where are you? And that is where I was. And I felt that way for so long. I don't know if you guys have ever heard that movie, that um, that song Circles by Mariah Carey, where she says, you know, put it on a smile with lipstick, put it on a big charade. It's kind of hard to keep pretending. It's getting harder every day. Can't you see I'm cold and heartsick since you turned and walk away? I just can't go in round and round and circles falling upside down. And so that is how I felt. I was putting on a smile with lipstick, doing these YouTube videos, right? Like, hey, single moms, hey, single moms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that song. That was my life, right? So, hey, single moms, let me show you how I can empower you. But like behind the scenes, I'm like pumping myself up, like pumping myself up. Like, yeah, I'm about to go and inspire, but can somebody inspire me? I felt empty. And I realized that I can't give to my kids what I don't feel. I was trying to overcompensate with them, overcompensate with the love, because I'm like, I'm going to prove to you that you're wanted, that you're wanted. Just because your dad tried to force me to have an abortion, that does not mean that you are not wanted. You are loved. And so my whole life became defined by how I parented my kids and I lost myself in the process. I felt, you know what, Lord, then walked away from a business. I don't feel like I have a purpose anymore. But the one thing I'm not going to do is I'm not going to fail my kids. So I'm going to keep showing up for them because they were my motivation to get back up. When I was in the corner crying after their dad left me and I was pregnant and I had no idea what I was going to do next. I was literally in the darkest corner of my bedroom, window shades pulled, blinds pulled to make it dark. And I was literally balled up in a fetal position crying because I had no idea what I was going to do next, let alone how I was going to get back up again. But God, little by little, he would send something to me or someone to me, or I would have a meeting that I would have to get up for. And slowly but surely, I would just get back up again for a day, you know, for an hour, for a couple of minutes. The next thing you know, it became a day, right? Wow. Yeah. That's so interesting. You see the forced abortion stuff is crucial. Yes, yes, yes. Um, God is a healer. Absolutely. And so I was able to get back up again, slowly but surely. And it's interesting because I was, I had a podcast at the time and there were times where I had to um, do a podcast interview. So I would get back up to do a podcast interview because I had to interview the guest and that guest would say something that I needed in that moment. And it was enough to keep me going a little bit longer. And then next thing you know, I was finally able to leave the house again. I was able to do things like go to the grocery store that became a big deal. I can actually get up and get dressed and go to the grocery store. And eventually I found healing again. But what I wanted to tell you in this is that sometimes we get to the point where we can get back up again, but we have not healed. And so we try and run back into the things that we used to do without full healing. And we run into a brick wall, which is why I ended up taking that step back because I could not go any further in my business. At this point, I was not showering. I would shower my kid. Like it, it got so bad when my kids learn how to speak. Uh, they would just say, mama, you need to shower. You smell. Because I got to the point where, because I had been rejected by him so hard because I had went through two and a half years of workplace bullying. 
because my friends were talking behind behind my back about me for being a single mom and laughing behind my back about how I was a single mom. I felt rejected upon rejected upon rejected upon rejected. I ended up rejecting myself to the point where I did not think that I deserved to be clean anymore. And so I stopped showering, I stopped wearing clean clothes, and I stopped washing my hair. And that's how bad it got. And it was like this for a couple of years, a couple of years. My grandma's 100 years old now, praise God. And I remember back, she has dementia now, but I remember looking at pictures before her dementia got really bad and she couldn't really remember us all that well. And I see us out doing activities, but I can't even frame these pictures with me and my grandma and my kids, like all these generations, because I looked a hot mess, I looked crazy, because I was unraveling, unraveling, and no one even noticed, because I had to hold it all together, but God, but God is a healer, and I say this to say that God can heal your circumstances, God can heal your heart. God can give you joy again. God has a purpose and a plan for you. And I could not understand. Oh, you're welcome. I'm so happy this blessed you. I could not understand why this was my portion. I used to cry out even as I began to find healing. Like, Lord, why is this my portion? My parents are married. They've been married for 40 years. How is this my portion? How am I the one to get it so spectacularly wrong? How? How? How am I the one that was a National Honor Society, Honor Roll Society, magna cum laude, the one with the six-figure corporate job, the one who checked all the box where people looked at me, they said, oh, Aisha has it all together. How is this my portion? But literally, I'm going to read to you something that I wrote today, the Lord just put it on my heart. And I shared this on Facebook earlier. And I said, have you ever felt like something you worked on was way bigger than you? Have you ever realized that your pain had a purpose? This is how I feel about the single mom face summit. I don't know what it is, but things make sense. I realized that my pain wasn't for me. It was to be a testimonial to God's goodness so that someone else could be saved and realize that it's possible to heal, to walk in purpose and to lean into who God has called you to be as a woman and as a mom. That's how I feel. I realized, I remember I was um, driving one day and all of a sudden I got this, um, I got this thought in my mind and I could feel the Lord and I could feel the Lord saying something. I was just like, Lord, you know, you do say that in this life, there will be trials and there will be tests, but take heart because you have overcome the Lord. Give us certain pain because you can trust us with it. Because you know that even though we bend, we won't break. Okay, sorry, has some, uh, yes, the devil is a liar. The devil tried to kick me off the internet. Okay, um, but yeah, you see palm trees. Palm trees are built for the hurricane climate because with what other trees would break in a hurricane, God, the, the palm trees get right back up after again, right? And that's what I was starting to wonder. I'm like, Lord, I wonder if you allow these certain things in our lives because you, we, we will, you can trust us with the pain. Because not only do you know that we won't break, but we will turn to you, cry out to you, continue to seek you, and to use our testimony to go back out and reach the masses. 
we will go back out to proclaim the goodness of you, how good you are, and in turn, bring other people up out of their pain. See, as I'm listening, looking at these comments, right? As I'm looking at this, like the stuff that I was ashamed of, the stuff that I was afraid to tell people. I was afraid to tell people that I walked around stinking with dirty hair for almost three years because I didn't deserve to be, because I didn't believe I deserved to be clean. I was ashamed of that. I was ashamed of saying that, you know what? I had an 800 credit score when I was talking about personal finances, but it had tanked down to poor credit. And I felt unqualified to even be able to teach finances anymore. I was ashamed to be able to say that I bought my first house. I was proud of my first house. My, my kids had an interior decorated um, baby nursery that I had to sell because I could no longer afford it. I had a six-figure salary and I went to the place where I had a lot of money in the savings account, but it went down to zero. But yet I'm supposed to be the person sitting up here talking about faith, talking about finances when I feel unqualified. And you know why? You know why that was my portion? For the comments that I'm reading right now. For the comments that I'm reading right now, and don't get me to crying because I have mascara on. It was for the comments that I'm reading right now, for the people who are in this situation right now who need hope for a better future. You see, that's it. He trusted me with the pain because he knew that I was going to give glory to him and use it to get out here and tell other people about the faithfulness of God. That's why he increases our faith. Absolutely. He increases our faith. And as I think about that, like this message that God has had on my heart for so long, literally for like the last, since the beginning of this year, he keeps telling me, go out and tell these single moms that God has a purpose and plan for them, that he loves them and that he has not forgotten about them. So literally almost like every single live I make, every single YouTube video, I'm like, God loves you. God has a purpose and plan for you. He has not forgotten about you. He has a plan for your children. He does. Don't let anybody tell you that your kids were a mistake. Your kids are not a mistake. God is a giver of life and God is a taker of life. And there are no accidents. There are so many people who wish that they could have kids right now who don't. So don't tell me that your kid is a mistake. Don't believe the nonsense and the lies that say that. I know there was something like with, uh, with uh, Tristan Thompson, whatever his name is, Khloe Kardashian's ex fed fiance, and that whole fiasco with him getting somebody else pregnant. And his in his text messages, he told her, why would you want to keep a mistake? That's disgusting. Your child is not a mistake. You are not a mistake. Your single motherhood journey is not a mistake. God doesn't make mistakes. God uses everything. And so I want to be able to, I want to jump into the story of uh, Exodus. Yes, I'm so happy this is blessing you. So I'm going to jump around in Exodus. I'm going to jump around. I'm going to be really through the first 14 books of Exodus because there's so much stuff in here. In Exodus, I encourage you to read it. Like um, in 2017, when I was really struggling with depression, I spent the whole year in the book of Exodus and it literally changed my life. It changed my life. It helped me to realize that God uses pain. God uses the least qualified. And so just a short summary, if you're not familiar with the book of Exodus. So, um, oh, yes, yes, yes. You're welcome. You're welcome, Amanda. And so, um, and definitely, uh, like I mentioned before, um, if there's a giveaway. If this is blessing you, please share this summit. Please share this summit. And there's a giveaway going on where somebody randomly is going to be picked to win the all access replay pass. So that way you can have these replays, you can have this, um, this discussion and all of the sessions, all 20 sessions afterwards. Um, so yeah, you can win it just by sharing this. But even if you don't win it, still make sure you upgrade your ticket to be able to get a copy of the replay. Okay, so Exodus. So the people of Israel were in Exodus, uh, were in Egypt. So Joseph, 
uh, one of the sons of Israel uh, went to eat with ended up being sold into slavery into Egypt he began to ascend to the second and position and there was a great famine in the land and this is the end of Genesis there was a great famine in the land jo um, Joseph was able to interpret the dreams of Pharaoh so that was that was why he ended up being elevated to second in command and then um, he was able to save pretty much society because he had the wisdom of God to be able to build up storehouses because there was a famine um, that was coming and so the people, there the arose a new king who forgot about Joseph and all the works that he did. And the new king decided he was jealous. He was jealous of the people of Israel. He was jealous of how God, God prospered them, how God has his hand on him and how they were just flourishing in Egypt. And he grew jealous. And so he said, you know what? I'm going to put these people in slavery and make them work for us, right? And that's what he did. But even in slavery, get this, ladies, get this. Even in slavery, the people of Israel prospered. They prospered. They grew. And you see this, right? You see this in Exodus 1, how it said the people of Israel were fruitful and increased greatly. And they multiplied and grew exceedingly strong so that the land was filled with them. Pharaoh ended up oppressing them, right? But then over in Exodus 1, 12, it says, but the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and the more they spread around. So guess what? Pharaoh decided to oppress them even more. And guess what? They still prospered. And so I wanted to say this because I'm sensing in my spirit that God is telling you that you might feel like you're being oppressed right now. You might feel like the deck, the deck is stacked up against you. You might look at all these messages and stuff on single, on um, social media, in the media, in the news. It's like, I don't know about you, but I am sick of people in the news talking about crime and like, oh, these kids are single moms, right? Like that is, that does not have to be your portion. It doesn't. You don't have to believe the stereotypes. You don't. It doesn't have to be your portion. You don't have to be broke. You don't have to be, you know, the baby mama drama. That does not have to be your portion. See, get this. When the world tried to run up against the people of Israel, God's hand was on them and the people of Israel still prospered. You will still prosper, single mom. Keep believing in the promises of the Lord. He is your God and he will never leave you or not forsake you. And get this, when Pharaoh called the, the Hebrew midwives to kill the sons, they said no, because they fear God more than man. So guess what? When God is trying to tell you that you have a purpose in you, are you going to fear God or are you going to fear man? Are you going to listen to what God says? Are you going to listen to the naysayers? God has a purpose and plan for you. Believe it. See, Pharaoh tried to choke out the purpose of the people of Israel, but God said, no, God made a way. But it's a people who believed in the word of God to say, I believe God. I am standing on the promises of God. So will you choose to stand on the promises of God? And so God sent a deliverer, Moses right? Moses, he was supposed to die. Moses wasn't supposed to live. I see stories in the comments where people are talking about how, you know, the father of their children were trying to force him to have an abortion. Well, guess what? Pharaoh tried to abort every single male child in Israel and God said no, because he had a plan for those kids. Don't listen to it. When the father of your kid says that your kid is a mistake, you might as well abort him or her. No, God has a plan for your kids. God saved Moses. And guess what? God brought Moses into the very palace of the people who hated him, hated his people. God rose Moses up in the palace of Pharaoh. God had a purpose and plan for Moses. Nothing is by accident. And get this, Moses' mom was still blessed. So if you look at <laughs> Exodus 2, so when Pharaoh's daughter plucked Moses out the water 
And Moses' sister went to Pharaoh and asked Pharaoh's daughter if she wanted Pharaoh's daughter to get, um, if she wanted her to get a woman from the Hebrews to be able to nurse Moses. Pharaoh's daughter said yes. And so Pharaoh, um, Moses' sister went and got Moses' mom. And Moses' mom got to raise Moses in Pharaoh's palace. But get this, the Hebrew people were slaves. But Pharaoh's daughter said, um, take this woman, take this child away and nurse him for me and I will give you your wages. So I was just like, well, yo, Lord, I, I read this story so many times and I never noticed that before. Pharaoh's daughter gave Moses' his mom wages. People of Israel were slaves, but she got wages and she was able to raise her own son in a palace in a place of the people who hated her and her people because God had his hand on her, just like God has his hand on you, single mama. And so if you get down to Moses. If you look down at Exodus 2, verse 11, one day when Moses had grown up, he went out to his people and looked on their burdens and he saw the Egyptians beating a Hebrew, one of his people. And you see this in verse 11, and you see this, um, you see this in verse 11, and then you see this again in verse 13. The Hebrew people were Moses' people. Moses was living in a foreign land, but he still knew who he was. I don't know about you, but sometimes being a single mom can feel like I'm living in a foreign land, especially in the church, like real talk, because I went through it where the church I was at at the time almost refused to dedicate my kids because I'm a single mom. They said that they don't know if I take my walk with Christ seriously because I'm a single mom. So there were times when I was in the church and I felt like an outsider. I felt like a sojourner. I felt like a stranger in church. But God, but God redeemed that and allowed me in that same church about a year or so later to end up starting a single mom's ministry in that church. And so sometimes you might feel like a foreigner in this world, but you're not a foreigner. God still has his hands on you. And if you look at verses 23, uh, actually 24, it said, and God heard their groaning and God remembered his covenant with Abraham and with Isaac and Jacob. And God saw the people of Israel and God knew. And this is so powerful to me because it lets me know that God hears my cries. God hears my prayers. God hears my cries and my pleas on behalf of my children to be faithful in the Lord, to be strong, to be, to just thrive. God hears my cries as I, I literally pray for all of you all. For the last few days, I've been praying for you all. It lets me know that God hears my prayers for you. God hears my prayers in intercession for the children across the world. God hears my prayers for me. He hears it. He hears our groaning. So don't give up on your prayers. God hears you. And here's where I love it. And this is one thing that, and that oh my gosh, like, I'm so happy that we're here in verse three, in um, chapter three. Single moms. <laughs> I just want to let you know, if you haven't picked it up already, but you are qualified. You are qualified. It doesn't matter what anybody else says. It doesn't matter what your past is, but you are qualified. And so let's look at Moses in Exodus 3. Yes, God is hearing your cries and prayers. Absolutely. And here, so I'm going to read a little bit and I'm going to stop. I'm going to read and I'm going to stop because he can tell I'm getting real excited because this ministered to me so much. And it continues. Every time the devil tries to tell me that I'm not qualified, I remind myself of Moses. I remind, oh yes, I'm so happy you needed this today. I remind myself of Moses, right? So Moses, by this point, he fled because he ended up killing an Egyptian for, uh, for beating a Hebrew person. So he fled into Midian. And so he ended up taking a Midian white, uh, a Midianite wife, and he became a shepherd. So Moses went from prince in the palace to shepherd. 
That's a word right there. I just felt the spirit of the Lord saying, some of you guys felt like you were princesses and queens, and now you feel like you're a shepherd. Because back in the time of the Exodus, back in the time of, um, you know, back, actually back in Egypt, shepherding was looked down at, it was considered a disgusting profession. And um, so the shepherds were really dirty and stuff. They lived with the animals. And so I don't know about you guys, but that's, that's how I felt. Like when my finances began to bottom out, out from under me, I had to sell my home. You know, it's like all of this. I felt like I went from here to here, but God says that don't be fooled. Sometimes that setbacks is a set, what seems like a setback is truly a setup for your purpose. And so let's see what happens to Moses. Moses ended up being a shepherd. And so one day he was out shepherding the herd, right? And in verse three, and actually in verse two, it says the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. He looked and behold, the bush was burning, yet it was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside to see this great sight. Why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, then the Lord said, do not come near. Take your sandals off of your feet. For this place on which you're standing is holy ground. And he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. So I wanted to pause here right here real quick. Moses was on the run. Moses was living in exile. Moses had lost everything that he had ever built and worked towards for his entire life. He lost his position. He was separated from his family and he was now a shepherd living in exile away from his people. But where did God meet him? God met him in his exile. God met him in his lowly place. God let, let, met him in the middle of the wilderness. Some of you guys are feeling like you're in a wilderness season right now, but God hasn't abandoned you. God is still there with you. And he will meet you in your wilderness place. Just keep having faith. And just as Mo God showed up to Moses in a burning bush, be on the lookout, be on expectation for how God is going to show up and meet you. He is there for you. He has a plan for you. And not only did he have a plan for Moses, he had a plan for Moses' people. Because God uses the unlikely. He uses the people who the world might cast aside. He uses anyone. And so God uses you. And I pray that by the end of this message, you truly believe that God has a purpose and plan for you. Verse seven says, and then the Lord, at, the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt. And I have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. I know their sufferings and I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out that land into a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey to the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Parasites, the Hivites, the Jebusites. And now behold, the cry of the people of Israel has come to me i have also seen the oppression with which the egyptians oppressed them come i will send you to pharaoh that you may bring my people the children of israel out of egypt i just want to pause right here god heard the cries of his people the people's tears were not lost there was not a moment of pain that the people of israel suffered for 400 years that god did not hear god did not see that God was not concerned about. And so the cries of you, single mama, have reached the eyes of the, have reached the ears of the Lord. The eyes of the Lord look upon you with favor, with love, with comfort and peace. And I'm here to tell you that he's heard your cries and he is calling you up out of that place of pain into a place of joy, into a place of wonder, into a place filled with milk and honey, a place where you will prosper and your children will prosper because God is truly there for his people. And so Moses said in verse 11, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? Hmm. So I know somebody on this call right now, on this uh, live right now, 
doing like I was doing. <laughs> and honestly, literally yesterday <laughs> was doing. Who am I to show up and tell these people that God has a purpose and plan for them? Who am I to show up and launch this business that the Lord has told me to launch? Who am I to show up in my full authority given to me by Jesus Christ and say that I'm not just a single mom. I am a woman called and ordained by Christ to do great things. Who am I to say that my children will thrive? My children can be the president of the United States if he wants to or she wants to. Who am I to have big plans for my children? Who am I to walk in the purpose and plan God has called for me? Who am I to launch that ministry? Who am I to launch that my prophet? Who am I to speak with boldness about the afflictions in my community? Who am I? I was here to say, who are you not to? Who are you not to? God equips the called and God has chosen you. God has chosen you. And listen to what God says in verse 12, after Moses asked that, who am I? Question that we all ask. We all ask, to be honest. We all ask this. The Lord told Moses, but I will be with you. I will be with you. See, that's the key right there. That's the key. The key isn't who am I. The key isn't who is you. The key is who is God. And if God has called you, then he has already made a way for you. And Moses argues with God. Literally, he argues with God. He says, uh-uh, uh-uh. If I show up and tell him to the people of Israel, like that the God of your fathers has sent them, they're going to think I'm nuts. And it's so funny, like literally this is how the enemy works because before this call, I was talking to one of my good friends and I was just like, yo, yo, like I know that the Lord is calling me to do the single mom ministry, but like, I, I, I mean, but seriously, who am I? I've made so many mistakes. I've made so many mistakes in my life. I'm not perfect. Who am I to sit up here and bring this message of hope to people? Who am I to launch this ministry? Who am I to stand in, stand in the gap of intercession and prayer on behalf of these moms to help them to believe God has a purpose and plan for them? Who am I to tell them that they don't have to be broke, that they have a purpose, they can launch businesses, that they can launch ministries, that they can have financial freedom? Who am I? Have you seen the hurt and pain that I've been through in my life? Have you seen my failures? Have you heard the things that people have said to me when they have told me that I would be, that I was unqualified? Have you heard this? So who am I to show up on this live at 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern time today to deliver this message of hope for people? Who am I? To stand here on social media and say what the Lord tells me to say and speak what the Lord tells me to speak when I am not an ordained minister. Who am I? And you know what she told me? You know what she told me? She said, because God called you and that's all you need. And my, and my mentor told me, she said, God used a donkey. So why wouldn't he use you? God says, if my people will not praise me, I will make the rocks cry out and pray for me. So who are you not to do what God told you to do? Because there is someone on this call right now who is struggling with the same things that I was struggling with. Who is saying, who am I to show up in the full authority given to me in Christ Jesus to do the works that God has called you to do? That message that God has called you is not a mistake. You weren't imagining it. That idea that God placed in your heart, you didn't imagine it. God put it there. God put it there because he trusted you with it. 
And he wants to move you past your pace of pain, your past of disappointment, your um, move you past that place of disappointment, that place where you felt like where you were a failure, that thing that didn't work in the past before, those word curses that people uttered against you, that thing that the man told you that you would never be about, to, you would never amount to anything, you would fail as your mom and your kids would fail, and it, your kids should be aborted. That is a lie from the pit of hell. It was a lie designed by the, by the enemy, Satan, to try and steal your destiny. But today we say no to destiny thieves, destiny stealers. We stand firm on the promises of the Lord. And so just like Moses had to get to that place where he finally said yes, it took the, the, the anger of the Lord kindling against him. The Lord says, look, Moses. I hear your excuses, but you ain't getting out of this assignment. And I love Moses. I love Moses because I feel like Moses is me sometimes. <laughs> Moses was like, uh, what name did my will say sent me? And the God is like, I am. God, Moses was like, I don't understand. God was like, I am. And Moses was like, but I don't know if I can speak well enough. And God was like, I am. I'll be your mouth. I'll tell you what to say. And Moses was like, Finally, he came out. He couldn't come up with any more excuses. He was like, just as somebody else. And Lord was like, nope. <laughs> and so I'm here to tell you, if you're at that place where you're like, Lord, just as someone else. Mm -mm. He chose you. He chose you for a reason. And he trusted you <laughs> with this journey for a reason. And the beautiful thing is, right? I love, I love the Lord so much. If you can't tell, I love the Lord. The Lord told Moses what was going to happen. The Lord said, look, you're going to show up. Pharaoh, he's, he's not going to let you go. But I'll, I'm going to let you go. Pharaoh can't stand against me, right? But Moses and the people of Israel thought it was going to be easy. And it wasn't. It wasn't. And so they were ready to quit. And they began to doubt the promises of the Lord because the pathway to salvation and deliverance wasn't easy. So sometimes we have to get it into our mind that we just have to stand on the promises of God. Because walking from this valley of pain to purpose is not going to be easy. It's not going to be overnight. My kids are six. This is, when you count pregnancy, this has been a seven year journey of healing. And it's had some ups and downs. But eventually you get to this place where you're healing, right? You're moving in the right direction. Because we're standing on the promises of God because we recognize that life is a journey, not a destination. When you arrive, you die. So we need to enjoy the journey along the way and trust in the promises of the Lord along the way. Yes, seven. Oh, seven is the number of completion. Oh, ooh, I received that. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. And so I love this, right? At the end of Exodus 3, not only does God promise Moses and the people of Israel through Moses, that not only will they leave their captivity, but they're going to leave with wealth. They're going to leave with land, right? And so don't let anybody make you believe that just because you're a single mom, you're condemned to poverty. You're not. You're not. That's a lie. Don't let anybody think that because you're a single mom, your kids are going to be condemned to poverty. That's a lie. It only happens. Well, if you come into agreement with that lie, well, we have to get to the point where we're saying, mm -mm, mm -mm, not on my watch, because I serve a good God, a God who is mighty to save and who is mighty to deliver. And so one of the other things that I wanted to point out um, in this is so much, I can literally talk about this for days. Maybe I should do a Bible study on Exodus. It would be pretty cool. And then I can take my time because there's so much that I want to teach for, to you guys right now. And so I want to jump to Exodus 4, verse 21. And the Lord said to Moses, when you go back to Egypt, see that you do before Pharaoh all the miracles that I have put in your power. Again, I have read this story so many times. I about leapt out of my seat when I read this. Ready. I realized it, it was so liberating to me because I realized that I didn't have to be perfect 
I didn't have to be all, have it all together. I didn't have to be perfect as a mom. I didn't have to be perfect as a woman. I didn't have to be perfect as an entrepreneur. Why? Because God gave Moses the assignment and everything Moses needed to do it. Did you get that? Did you get that? You get that? God gave everything Moses to Moses. Moses' fears. God saw Moses was afraid to speak in public. And so he said, yo, I'm sending your brother Aaron to Okay, the devil is a liar, for real, for real. Okay, so the Lord saw Moses' fears and he mitigated his fears. Moses just needed to surrender to the Lord and to the process. And then as we see in verse 21, he says, the miracles that I have put in your power, the Lord gives us the power and the equipment and everything that we need to do the work that he has called us to do. The Lord has given you everything that you need to be a mom to your children. The Lord has given you everything that you need to walk in your purpose. The Lord has given you everything that you need to build that business. The Lord has given you everything that you need to start that ministry. The Lord has given you everything that you need to thrive, not just survive, but to thrive. That he has equipped you with the power to do the work that he has called you to do. Oh, thank you, Judy. Thank you. Eight is the number of new beginnings. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And I'm just like, I'm just amazed right now. I'm just so amazed right now. And I feel like this is a, I could go on because I said I was going to go um, <laughs> through 14, right? But I'm going to stop right here. Because I think that this is a good part. I, I think that this is a good place to stop. Um, but I want to say this. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But the Lord has come to give life more abundantly. But it is up to us to decide who are we going to believe. The lies of the enemy or the promises of the Lord. But the beautiful thing is we get to decide. We get to decide. And so I'm here to encourage you today. And I truly believe that since you're on this summit today, that you have decided to walk in faith and boldness and newness and who the Lord has called you to be. And I believe that for you, that just like Judy said, eight is a number, is the number for new beginnings. This is a new beginning for you. The summit goes until April 8th, right? <laughs> so this is a new beginning for you. This is a new beginning for you to believe different, to walk different, for your faith to grow, for you to truly believe that God has a purpose and plan for you, that he loves you, that he has called you, and that he has never lived, never, he will never leave you nor forsake you, and that he has never left you before in the past. And so today is the day that I pray that you walk new. Yes, and let us put on a full armor of God because we know his word. Yes, the mind is a battlefield. Absolutely, absolutely. And so I encourage you. Oh, there's one thing. There's so much I want to tell you. Like, I wanted to read something to you. I'm glad I remembered um, that I wrote this morning, uh, just in my prayer time this morning. It said the things in Moses that led him to feel unqualified for the mission 
were actually integral to his mission. These were the very things that God used in Moses to liberate the people. The Bible says that when we are weak, God is strong. The people of Israel thought that the Pharisees and scribes were the most important like during the time of Jesus. The people of Israel thought that the, the Pharisees and the scribes and the Sadducees were the most important, that these people were the number one uh, candidates for heaven. But instead, they were the number one candidates for hell because they were unable to surrender, move past their own pride, self-reliance, judgment, ego. They were unwilling to see their need of a savior because they were they couldn't see get past their own brokenness and pride is actually brokenness and so I want you guys the Lord was just really blessing me with this because sometimes our own brokenness can cause us to forget who we are and forget who God is and we miss the blessings and the favor that he's trying to give us because we can't see past our own pain and our own brokenness and so therefore if you feel unqualified you are in a prime position to be used because it helps you to see that you need a savior it helps you to see that you can't even take your next breath or let alone your next move without Jesus. But you also have to know that God will never leave you nor forsake you. Jesus is your help in ever present danger. God is a has a perfect purpose and a plan for you. You So you just have to have the faith to say yes to his will, yes to his calling, and yes to his plans. Say yes and surrender fully because, um, let's say yes to surrender because fully, um, because it's, oh yeah, because believing that you are unqualified has a way of causing us to run from the Lord. It has a way of causing us to find our qualifications and other things. And sometimes those things are not of God and can work towards destruction and harm. But because God is a great redeemer, he can redeem the years that the locusts have eaten. We just need to say yes to him. And so let me know how this has blessed you. This has blessed you. Literally, your comments are encouraging me so much. And I, this, this is blessing me. And um, yes, this is amazing. So uh, just a reminder, make sure you're sharing this summit out. That'll get you into the running for uh, the drawing for the all access pass. Make sure that you're upgrading your ticket to get your all access pass for the replay. The all access pass is only available during the summit. So once the summit ends, you will no longer be able to uh, purchase your all access pass. Now all access pass is the key to unlocking the replays. So you definitely want to to be able to go back and listen to this message over and over and over again. And matter of fact, we have um, another message at uh, at noon. So in just one hour, we have another speaker and she's going to be talking about confidence. And so, oh, wow, I'm glad this is blessing. You stumbled upon this via email. That is so cool. Um, and so our next speaker is going to be talking about confidence and how you can move in confidence. She has a really cool story. She actually was, um, the doctors pronounced her brain dead and said that she needed to be taken off of life support, actually not even put on life support, but she is living, breathing and talking today and no, she's not a ghost. So, um, so that's a beautiful story of what man pronounced dead. God said, not dead. And, um, like I'm just sitting, like the Lord is just speaking to me, right? The Lord is just speaking to me right now. What man has pronounced dead in your life and over your future and over your destiny, God has said, not dead, not dead. There is life. There is life. Just like God told Isaiah to prophesy to, the, to those dry bones and they will live again. Those things in your life that you thought were dead, that you stopped praying for, that you stop trusting God for, that you stop believing God for, God said there's life in those dead places. So what God, so what man has said dead, God has said not dead, not dead at all, at all. So keep believing, keep having faith. And so um, the next one after that is going to be, you are not a stereotype. Um, and we're going to be talking a lot about how people can stereotype single moms and how single moms can end up believing in that stereotype. And then we're going to be talking about the power of forgiveness, because I don't know about you, but I had to do a lot of forgiveness on this journey. And we're going to be talking about specifically how 
not forgiving and how unforgiveness can block your blessings and block you from walking in purpose. And then the last session for today, we're going to be talking about reinventing yourself. And so walking new, and then we'll start back up again at 10 a.m. tomorrow. So yes, we have a action pack schedule for you all. And so again, like I said before, um, make sure you're upgrading to your tickets because if you miss a session, you definitely want to go back and um, listen to it again. And so yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much for joining. Yay! Everybody say yay. I can't see you on the uh, on the Zoom, but yay, everybody say yay. I'm glad this has blessed you. I'm glad that this is giving you hope. And yes, 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 absolutely. I'm glad this is reminds you what God wants to use you for. Absolutely. Yes. I'm glad that this has blessed you. Oh my gosh, I'm like going back and like reading <laughs> uh, the comments there are just bringing me so much joy. Oh, this is so beautiful. So yes, if you love this, you are going to love the rest of the summit. So definitely stay tuned. I'm excited to see you in the rest of the summit. So we will talk soon. See you at 12 p.m. Eastern time, so in about an hour. Bye. Thank you for joining.